So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming out. We would like to first and foremost say a prayer for our fallen deputies. Last night was a horrible night for us here in Cobb County. Uh, we lost two great deputies. With that being said, we lost Deputy Jonathan Koloski, a 14-year-old deputy. We also lost Deputy Marshall Irving, Jr., a 38-year-old deputy with two children. This tragedy has not only affected the Cobb County Sheriff's Office, it has essentially affected the entire metro Atlanta area. Because of this, and because of you coming today, please join me in sending our condolences out to the family who definitely need our assistance and prayers during this time. And please give them the personal space they need to deal with this tragedy. At this time, I was transitioned over to the Cobb County Police Department Chief Van Hooser, whose team will be leading the criminal investigation into this horrible incident. Thank you, Sheriff Owens, and uh, thank you, uh, members of the media who have come to cover this. Um, first and foremost, on behalf of the Cobb County Police Department, inexpressible condolences and uh, heartache uh, are sent to this, the two families of the two heroes that gave their lives last night for this community. Um, really impossible to put into words what we're feeling at the Cobb County Police Department, but we do express our deepest condolences and the families, the friends of the officers and the co-workers will be in our prayers and our thoughts. I'd like to start off concerning the investigation to let everybody know that it is still early in the investigation. We have limited details and we will take some questions, but some of the answers we're not going to know and some of the answers just in the essence of fairness uh, in the judicial process, we are not going to be willing to answer. So we'll tell you a little bit about what, about what happened last night, tell you where we are in the investigation and where we expect that investigation to go. And then we'd like to say just a few words about the law enforcement community, uh, the community in Cobb County and Metro Atlanta that we have seen over the last uh, 16, 18 hours. <clears throat> last night at approximately 7.45, uh, the investigation reveals that the Cobb County Sheriff's Office was attempting to serve an arrest warrant at 2474 Hampton Glen Court in Marietta. While they were doing so, the uh, two of the deputies attempted to take uh, Mr. Christopher Cook into custody at the address in the driveway. While they were doing that, they were confronted by an individual inside the home with a weapon. The deputies, both deputies, gave that individual loud, clear, verbal commands to drop the weapon. He did not do that. At that point, there was an exchange of gunfire between uh, the subject and, and the deputies. Both deputies were struck by gunfire, and both deputies succumbed to their wounds. The individual inside the home who was armed and who shot the individuals, was named Christopher Golden. After a brief standoff inside the home, uh, both Christopher Golden and Christopher Cook came out and surrendered to police. Christopher Cook faces the original charges that uh, the Cobb County Sheriff's Office was there uh, to pursue on the outstanding warrant. 
Christopher Golden has been charged with two counts of aggravated assault on a police officer and two counts of murder. Our investigation, as I said earlier, is still ongoing. Uh, it's in its, really in, it, in its infancy. We have a lot of evidence to go through, including body cam video, testimonial evidence, physical evidence, some of which won't be ready for a while. Uh, because of that, there's gonna be a limited amount of information that I can give you guys uh, in questioning. Um, and before I open up for those questions, um, I would like to say just a few words about the general situation and what we saw here in Cobb County last night. <clears throat> the men and women in law enforcement do this job knowing on the front end that they may have to give their life for this job. They do it to avenge violence. They do it to seek justice for victims. They do it to prevent incidents like this from happening. Their goal is to protect human beings that they don't know. What we saw last night was not only a law enforcement family that came together in an incredible way, but we also saw the community come together in an incredible way. I went to the scene last night. Uh, on the way there, I listened to the radio. What you heard were law enforcement officers from probably every jurisdiction around here going into a situation that still was not safe. Um, because that's what law enforcement officers do. After that, I went to the hospital. Uh, my wife went to the hospital and we engaged with the families. We engaged with the officers who were mourning, the friends, the family. What we saw there was nurses in the corners crying, fighting tears. Um, my wife and I went to get something to eat really late probably two o'clock in the morning. And we had a waitress place our bill down with a folded $20 bill on it that covered everything we ate. We had our chaplains, not only our chaplains, but chaplains from other jurisdictions here in the middle of the night for the family and for law enforcement officers. What I'm saying is that the sense of gratitude that we felt from our community and from the law enforcement community was amazing. I feel and hurt for the Cobb County Sheriff's Office right now. Uh, and we are praying for the Cobb County Sheriff's Office, for the families, for the children of these incredible men that died last night. Um, our overarching message is really just one of thanks to everybody who helped us last night, to the people who are helping us investigate right now, and to the community that supports law enforcement. Your support is amazing and very, uh, very much appreciated. Uh, I will, I will uh, end there with uh, that portion. I'll open up for a few questions. Uh, and again, I will just caution that some of these details we just won't be able to release today. But if you have questions that we have not covered, I'll be happy to take those. Chief, was anybody else in the house at the time aside from these two men? We, at, after, we after all was said and done, we were able to clear the house. There was not uh, a third subject in the house. They, the only two people in the house, as I understand it, were the two that, uh, that, that came out. And what kind of gun did Mr. Golden have? We are not going to comment on the type of weapon used in this assault. Did Cook and Golden both live in the house? Yes, they did. Chief, could you tell us around what time they surrendered? I would be guessing on that. I can tell you it wasn't a very, very long barricade situation. It, it, it ended quicker than most barricade situations, but I don't, want to, I don't want to give you a time because it would be inaccurate. Is it still accurate to call it? Ambush, I think those are the words we heard earlier this morning, but how would you describe it? Well, I'll tell you this. People use words and interpret words the way they use and interpret words. Um, what I've just given you are facts, and those, those can be interpreted by 
viewers. Uh, I'm not going to label it with an actual word too subjective. I'm just not going to do that. Do we know anything about Bolden's criminal background? Well, we do. Uh, we are not going to comment on criminal background. Uh, we have a, a trial to protect, and so some of this information we're just holding close to the vest. Were you aware that Golden was at the house when you guys were going to serve the warrant to come? I'm going to refrain from answering that just out of caution, um, just because I'm not sure that detail should or should not be released. But for right now, I'm just going to refrain from that one. Did both deputies fire their weapons? I'm not going to comment on that either. What we have really, to be honest with you, is an unfolding investigation where we've seen limited video uh, and had limited interviews. And so we are not absolutely positive that we've got every bit of evidence we need to make, to make such questions uh, definitive. So we're going to just hold on that until the investigation is complete. Um, have you guys spoken to the families? Of course, you guys spoken to the families of the, of the two victims, of the two deputies. Can you talk a little bit about how, how are they feeling, how are they doing now? The, the families of, of the, the deputies, victims? The deputies. I can tell. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We have spoken to both um, family members, both wives. And of course, they both are devastated, as anyone would be in this tragedy. So um, they are heartbroken, as we all are. And we come together as a family. Uh, from with the support of our local agencies, with our chair, as well as some supporting sheriffs as well, who you see behind us, and the GBI as well. And we're all giving them as much support as we possibly can to comfort them during this time. So they have been talk, talked to, and we continue to talk to them. We have the Sheriff's Foundation, which has also stepped into the plate, and we'll be finding, um, supporting, supporting the family with some financial needs. Uh, Mr. Robert Haley represents the Sheriff's Foundation. He's here, he's here today as well. And we'll be producing um, some things to the family as late as this evening to help them get through this loss as well. Can you describe the deputies as people themselves? What have you learned from their families that they will miss that strangers, maybe viewers watching this, should know about them? Well, the easiest way I can tell you is they was outstanding men, men of character and integrity, uh, family men, loved by their family and their kids. Um, and that's what the wives explained to us unfortunately during this terrible event at the hospital. So they were greatly loved by their family and, uh, and their kids as well. Sheriff, would you mind repeating their ages, the deputies' ages, and, and saying how many children they Yes. Had? Deputy Kalowski is, was, I'm sorry, 42 years of age. And Deputy Urban was 38 years of age with two children. And both of them was married. Chief, obviously your operations don't stop right now, but how does a tragedy like this impact your day-to-day -day operations? It impacts it, but however, we as in law enforcement know we have to get back on that horse and keep riding and protect and serve the people of the county, and that's what we're here to do. So we're going to protect the citizens of Cobb County, and we're going to get back out there and do exactly what the citizens pay us to do. And so it's, it's, it's tremendously hard for us to do that, I will admit that, but my men and women that work for the Sheriff's Office is up to the challenge, and we will go back to work today and perform the duties that the citizens of Cobb County deserve. Sheriff, you've talked about how you will help the families out during this time. Have you figured out a way that you will honor the deputies themselves, either your office or any of the agencies standing here today? That's a great question. I have not figured it out as of yet because, again, we're very early in this stage of this unfortunate incident, and we'll be getting some committees together and the family me members together and see how we can properly honor those uh, great deputies who serve Cobb County Sheriff's Office. Sheriff, how does it make you feel to see so many other law enforcement officers here to support you? There are so many locally and even nationally supporting you. Absolutely, and I'm glad you brought it up. As you see behind us today, just in case I wasn't clear and I didn't identify them properly, I do apologize. So we have Sheriff Kibo Taylor from Gwinnett here today. We have Sheriff Pat about Fulton County. We have the City of Marietta's Police Chief, um, Mr. Farrell here today, Chief Farrell as well as we have our great county commissioner, Lisa Cupid. The, the support that we receive from our law enforcement brothers have been tremendous, tremendous, not only in the state of Georgia, but across the United States of America. We have people call me today from Germany and Ireland giving their condolences and what can they do to help us. So again, as I stated last night, when, when we have a tragedy like this in our law enforcement family, it not only affects us here locally, 
but it affects us across the United States and even worldwide, as we can see today. So we were receiving a lot of support. And specifically from, I, I like to say, my next door neighbor brother, which is the PD, where I spent 31 years, they have been with us <clears throat> since the beginning of this. And thank you again, Chief, for all of y'all help and assistance in working this case for us as well. So we've been very fortunate to receive a lot of support from the law enforcement community, as well as the Cobb County community as well. A lot of Cobb County community leaders have called and contacted us and offered any support they can give us as well. Sheriff, can you talk about um, how dangerous it is uh, to serve these kinds of warrants? I mean, it just goes to show how dangerous of a job it is for law enforcement officers. Right. Is it normal for, for your office to serve that specific warrant for such a petty crime, like a theft by deception? Yes. We're, we're bound by a law to serve them as we receive them from the judge. So that's a, a, a duty, a mandate we have to do to serve and try to find individuals who wants to take an out for. And some people consider that a routine and mundane job, and we don't. And, and it, it can be violent, as you can see. The simplest type thing can turn violent quickly. So we try to treat everything we can with caution as we serve each and every one. Did these deputies uh, tend to work together usually? There was an evening shift deputy, so they do work together on a, on a regular basis. And the evening shift means that's the shift they work on. One message that you're looking to send to, to your department right now, who's grieving the death of two deputies right now, and like you said, you still have a job to do. Absolutely. To the message I got to my command staff this morning was this. As leaders, we have to show our deputies and our civilians that we are here to lead our agency through adversity. Be strong. Make sure we're taking care of them and let them know they, ha they have the right to grieve. Provide them the services to, to grieve and the support ram that they need. So we're providing them all that support. We're giving them good leadership. And we also tell them we have a job we still must continue to do, even though this unfortunate incident hit our family. Do you have someone here who can speak more to their lives, who, who maybe works together with the deputies, who can shed a little bit more life on, of light on how their life works? I do, but I don't think it's appropriate for them to speak today because of their closeness to them. They are still extremely upset about it, as I'm quite sure you understand. Again, ladies and gentlemen, this has broken the hearts of my deputies and civilians. So for some of them to speak on this today is very hard. It's hard for me to speak on it, to be honest with you. But I have to as a leader of this organization. But it hurts all of us. But I prefer for them not to endure any more pain than they have to today. Will the GBI have a role in this investigation? Well, y'all got some good questions, but I got the answer for you. Absolutely. GBI has always helped us out in this situation. Director Register has offered his um, services of his agency, and he's here. If he'd like to speak, he can. But they'll be here in a supporting role um, and give us any support we may need. Director. I really have no comments. This is, uh, you know, the sheriff and the uh, Chief Ann Hooser's uh, conference, uh, news conference, but I will tell you that uh, the GBI stands ready to give any support that is needed uh, for either agency. Thank you. Sheriff, I have one question about, um, last night I think you initially reported the suspects pulled up in a car and started firing, but did this happen inside the house? They were inside the house or they were in the car? You want me to take that, Sheriff? Yeah, that's fine. Ma'am, would you repeat the question? That's more of an investigative question. Sure. So I think the sheriff initially told us last night, the deputies knocked, they were walking towards the car, and the two suspects pulled up in a car and started firing at them. But did it actually happen inside the house? Is that what you're saying today? No, ma'am, it did not happen inside the house. It did happen out to, the deputies were shot outside the house. I will say this, just so everybody knows, law enforcement tries to be very transparent. And the quicker we get information out, sometimes new information comes later so and and even some of the things that we might be saying today we might discover some augments to that information so uh things that came out last night that it's fluid and every 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 circumstance is so uh but yes ma'am you you have the understanding correct if you believe that it happened outside the house it did happen outside the house were they shot in the back I'm not going to release that information either. So what was the car's involvement? Was there a car involved or was the shooting coming from inside the house? The shooting was coming from inside the house. Chief, there's a lot of damage to the house this morning. Was there any attempt to breach the house or you know, like forcibly detain the suspect? 
that damage occurred as a result of the safety considerations for the remaining officers on the, in the field. Um, that was an extremely dangerous situation. Some of the details we will not share with you today. But in the end, uh, I think you will agree that uh, this was an uphill battle for law enforcement last night. I'm thankful for the lives of these two men. They dedicated their whole life to doing what they do. Um, I'm also thankful that there weren't more law enforcement or civilian fatalities because there very well could have been. Um, so yes, there's damage to the house. Um, and that damage was for the safety of the remaining officers on the, in the field. Was there any more gunfire exchanged after the initial back and forth between the deputies and the suspects? There was not. Can, can you explain, there's a belief that one of the deputies died on the scene and the other one died on the way to the hospital. Can you explain where exactly those deaths happened? I do not have the information to answer that accurately. Uh, that's a medical question. Uh, so I'm not going to be able to answer that question. Uh, Chief, I don't know if this question is for you or uh, Sheriff Owen, but will this situation change your policies, tactics, or procedures in any way? That would be That'd something be for Sheriff Owen. More so, um, as the Chief Van Hoosen stated, once we get a chance to review everything, it is a fluid situation as in the investigation. So once we have a complete investigation, we can see what tactics were used, whether they're good or bad, and then we'll make a decision if we need to change the way we do business. But we can't make any rash decisions until we see what the investigation holds and what the video shows, and then we can make a decision after that. And someone asked a question I want to just roll back to real quick, I think it's important, uh, regarding the family. And I, I have the foundation, one of the founder members of the Cobb Sheriff Foundation here, who can really explain to you what the foundation is going to do for the, the family. Good evening. Thank you, Sheriff. Sheriff Owens, Chief Van Hooser, and all the law enforcement behind me. Whenever you have these situations, as you can imagine, the, out, the outgoing support is tremendous. I mean, it, it, it's, it's tremendous, the support that we receive. So my name is Robert Haley. On behalf of the foundation, and you all know when you hear that word foundation, first of all, it's a 501c3 nonprofit organization. So you know in, in situations like this, monies begin to come. And one thing we have to be very, very sure is that we are transparent to the families that the money that we receive goes to where it's supposed to go. So let me make that very clear, that the money goes to, and it's accounted for. Because I can tell you, since this occurred, the support is, is, is outpouring. I mean, corporations are calling, uh, individuals are calling. So, and let me just tell you how, the, how this foundation is structured. On behalf of the chair of the board, Brent Brown, you can take the names if you like, Brent Brown. Our treasurer is Dan Oliver, president of Vining's Bank. Brent Brown is the chairman of Chesley Brown uh, Security. Uh, Ravi Puri is a, is a own, own investment, and Frank Wigginton has his own landscape company. Now on that board, there are 18 individuals. The website for that for that foundation is www.cobbsheriffsfoundationinc. And you can go on there and see that, see that foundation. You can, you can look at it. There's, there's a donate button on there for fallen heroes. So when you go on that website and you go to that button for fallen heroes, the funds that we will get will go into that, uh, for lack of a better, that bucket for, the, for these families. So we are prepared, and we are, and I have, I, I, I'm the executive director for the foundation and the founder of it. So we have already received 
I'm, I'm, I'm talking about serious, serious money. Ex uh, I mean, large amounts already. I mean, w that's what we're, we're hearing, okay, from large corporations as well. So we're going to uh, uh, look at setting up a, uh, a uh, scholarship fund for the, for the two kids. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna provide resources right now. As you know, it takes the administrative process for this to flow for the wives to get their funds from their county and from all that they're, it's going to take a minute. But the foundation is prepared to provide them with funding right now for, for their immediate needs, for their immediate needs. They will also need an attorney. We're going to, we're going to look at that so that they have the right uh, legal advice going forward. So the foundation to support Craig Owens is, is, is here. And we are, we are very firm and committed to, to uh, respond in this terrible, terrible tragedy. Chairwoman Cupid, um, he mentioned that money's already flowing in. I'm watching people watch the live stream, and there's just a lot of so sorrow being expressed on there by residents of Cobb County. Can you tell us how this impacts the county from what you've heard already and county government? Yes. Uh, this is a tragic event for our county, and our hearts go to the grieving families and to the sheriff's office. But this extends beyond that. There's a hurt that's felt through the law enforcement community and all of the members of our community who've been touched directly by these deputies and beyond for our citizens have a great affection for those in law enforcement. We understand a lot of people are grieving right now and we ask for us to support our law enforcement at this time. We recognize there's a vulnerability in communities, but there's an inherent risk to this position of serving in law enforcement. And as citizens, it's important for us to be mindful of that as we continue to bridge um, the relationship with the community and officers. And I believe the foundation that was just discussed is a great opportunity for us to do so. And so I just want to encourage members of the public that have been reaching out to see how they can help for them to use it as a medium to see how we can support the family immediately. But for us to do as we've continued to do was just to support our law enforcement. Sheriff Owens, when do you feel it was so important to be there in the room when the first appearances occurred with your fellow sheriff uh, earlier today? You said, why did I feel it was important? For you to be there. And we, your fellow sheriff, there. What, what, what prompted you to be there today? Well, I wanted to look him in the eye who committed this act. I wanted to look him in the eye who committed this act. As well as my fellow sheriffs behind me wanted to see the same thing. That's just the honest truth. I wanted to see the individuals who committed this heinous act against my, against my deputies. And I wanted to look in their eyes. I know this happened yesterday before we had an, uh, we had an event in the evening celebrating your birthday. And for this to happen, you must feel really upset and hard and mad. And I don't know how you tell us. I'm not going to say I'm upset. I'm, um, <laughs> today is actually my birthday. Happy birthday. We was having a celebration event last night for my birthday. And I had to leave that event and, of course, go to this. So I, um, I'm never upset about working because that's what the citizens of Cobb County elected me to do. So I'm never upset about that. I'm more um, disappointed because I did not get a chance to see my deputies. So I'm not mad. I'm disappointed and, because I wasn't there to see them. So that's, how, that's my feeling. So. But today is my birthday, so y'all all can tell the sheriff happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Last you question. Have photos of the deputies that you can release for us? Yes, there's a, here's on the screen in front of you. And uh, we have some that we can get to you electronically as well. Sheriff, any closing remarks and then we'll be done. Um, again, I'd just like to say thank you all for coming out and supporting us um, during this tough time for the sheriff's office. Um, again, the most importantly, we need to give the family uh, of our deputies some time to grieve in peace. 
and let's make sure we do that respect being respectful of them as well as my deputies need time to grieve and I'd like to thank all uh, the support I receive from all the law enforcement partners throughout the state of Georgia and outside the state of Georgia as well again thanks to my fellow sheriffs who are here today and the ones who was here last night and all the local chiefs who, were, who came out last night, the GBI, the GSP, everyone came and showed us support. And that is what it's about when we have a crisis. Everyone sticking together to accomplish that one mission. Now I'd like to say last night we really showed a model we have here at the Sheriff's Office where the auto enforcement, all the law enforcement came together as one team to accomplish one mission. And that's what we did last night. And I'm so proud of everybody who showed up last night and, and helped us accomplish that mission. But again, thank y'all for coming. Again, thank y'all, law enforcement partners. Commissioner, thank you so very much. Mr. Haley, thank you for the foundation. And Chief, again, thank you and the PD for helping us out with this, as well as the GBI, who's going to support as well. Thank you.